Hello. Hello, Mark. How are you doing? Hey, Nathan. How are you? Yeah, very good. Uh, good. It's not like we haven't been chatting for half an hour or anything no, like that. But we'll pretend we haven't been. Yeah, we pretend <laughs> like we've just met. Um, this is Mark. Look, there he is. It's Mark Westgard from WS Form. Um, WS Form, as you're about to find out, is, is actually pretty remarkable. Um, it may well be that you've got a, a WordPress plugin which is a form solution, and you may be entirely happy with it, but keep an open mind because I think it's fair to say that Mark has built a pretty remarkable product. He's going to try to show you what it can do. Obviously, there's a lot of caveats in there. We've got limited time. There's only so many things that Mark can cherry pick, um, but he's a very open developer. He's incredibly good at support and all of those kind of things. And so what I was thinking was if you have any thoughts as to what Mark is showing, maybe just scribble it down on a bit of paper or drop a comment in. That might be the best way to do it. And then at the end, we'll try to provide a bit of space where I can ask Mark questions. I don't know if you've got a hard stop in an hour, Mark, or if there's a bit of flexibility there. Yeah, I'm flexible. So He's we're flexible. Good. That's good to know. <laughs> um, the other thing to say, though, if you are watching this um, live, then you know, feel free to feel free to share it. it. Might be a good idea to drag some of your other WordPress colleagues in. I suspect the best way to share it would be to go to this URL. It's wpbuilds.com forward slash live wpbuilds.com forward slash live. Go and tweet that or stick it in your Facebook, whatever it may be, and see if you can drag some of your colleagues and friends in because Mark's only going to be here live for the next hour or so. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if you do go to that URL, you need to be logged into some kind of Google account because the chat there is, um, is YouTube chat. Alternatively, though, you can go to our Facebook group uh, or Facebook page, and if you do that, then you do have to go through a little bit of a hoop to get your name recognized. So if you're on Facebook watching this, you have to go to chat.restream.io forward slash FB. It's on the screen, chat.restream.io forward slash FB, and then authorize the platform to let us know who you are. Otherwise, you just come across as this anonymous user, which is fine. You know, you can do it that way if you like. So yeah, we're going to get stuck into it. There's, there's a couple of prizes that we're going to give away at the end. I've got a coupon code. Uh, which serves two purposes. Not only does it get you 20% off, but also it will. Uh, it's actually an affiliate link, which gives me some some, some revenue as well. So <laughs> hurrah, hurrah to Mark. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. We're not going to do the whole, you know, webinar playbook sort of thing. It really is just a demo. Um, Mark's going to show off his stuff. There's no hard sell. If at the end of it you don't, you're not interested, so be it. But if you are interested, we'll we'll share some URLs and things like that as well. Okie doke, Mark. First of all, do you want to just introduce yourself? Let people who've not come across you before know who you are. Yeah, sure. So Mark Westgard, founder of WS Form. Um, I'm also an agency owner, so I've been an agency owner for about 26 years, um, which is kind of where WS Form was born from, wanting a, a decent form solution for for WordPress. I've got to say, Mark, Westgard just occurred to me. That sounds like something out of Game of Thrones, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, or maybe yeah. the kind of place where Thor hangs out. Or it's quite medieval, like, you know, isn't it? Where yeah. are you from? I am from Westgard. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's yeah, funny, really. when I researched my ancestry, my last name is actually Westgarth. And then oh, somebody that sounds Scottish it at some point, yeah, and it, it changed to Westgard. So yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, thank you. Well, he's here. Just a couple of things. So, first of all, some hellos. Hi there, uh, Michelle. Nice to have you with us from sunny Atlanta. We have got Bob Don, aka uh, Bob WP. Do the woo. Thanks for joining us uh, and helping to promote this. Bob, there was a there was a time when Bob was going to join us on the call, but he's, <laughs> he's decided against it. Uh, we've also got. Rob Cairns coming in from Canada. Uh, it's heckling probably. time, he says. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and speaking of Scotland, look, we have Neil. We Neil Robertson's here, and he's saying yeah. it is hey, overcast. Neil. Yeah, Neil, I'm not that far from Scottish borders, <laughs> and uh, it's very overcast here as well. Uh, yeah, Nathan's double dipping. I guess that's an affiliate reference. Thank you, <laughs> Rob. Okay, let's get on with it, shall we? I'm just going to share Mark's screen. Mark's got a whole list of things that he's going to present. But as I said, if you want to drop a question in or you want him to go off in a different direction at the end, just drop in a question there and yeah. we will make sure to provide a little bit of time. So enlarge the screen for you. Should we take ourselves off the screen or should we stay on the screen? I, I think we'll stay on the screen, to be honest. Let's do it. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, so okay. go for it, Mark. Let's do it. Yeah. So this is um, 
this is the WS form template library. And we have uh, a bunch of static templates, but we also have dynamic templates as well. And I'll show you those in a moment. Those are pretty cool. Uh, there's everything in here from your regular contact us form through to demos as well, which so shows some of the more complex stuff that you can do with, with WS form. But I'm just going to start off with a basic form and show you the layout editor in WS form so you can see how that works. So we're the only form um, editor that actually is fully responsive. And what we mean by that is that you can design a form for different, um, different device screen sizes, everything from mobile all the way up to desktop. And at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see a responsive uh, breakpoint selector. And if I scroll that left and right, you can actually preview the form at different breakpoints. You'll notice that the layout is changing per breakpoint. So we store a layout per breakpoint. So on mobile, typically, you're going to want to have just single width fields uh, on the mobile device. So they take up the whole width of the screen. And then as you go up to maybe a laptop, you maybe want to do multi-column layout on that. Um, so let's just show you some of the layout features that you can do. So you can resize fields very easily. There's no need to worry about custom classes or anything like that. Um, you can copy fields. You can actually offset fields as well. So you can move them in and out on the screen. Um, each of these sections contains fields, and you can resize those to any width that you want. You can copy sections. You can also do multi-step forms with WS Form very easily. So all you do is just click on Add Tab at the top of the form, and you can actually drag sections between tabs. So if you've got a very long form, you can add tabs and then drag that content into each of those tabs to split that form up. Uh, let me just preview this so you can see what this looks like. So we'll preview the form. And you'll notice um, that we have a debug console at the bottom of the screen here. Now, what this debug console does is it gives you information about the form that you're currently interacting with. So I can click Populate on this, and it will actually fill the form out for you. So the idea with that is when you're testing a form, uh, let's say you've got a form with 100 fields on it, having to um, fill out all those fields, press Submit, and test it over and over again can take a long time. So we have this Populate feature. And every time you click Populate, you get different data on the form. There's also a populate and submit button. So if I click on that, it will populate the form, submit the form, and that's it. So that's how quick it is to actually populate and test forms with WS4. That's so cool. <laughs> if we go to submissions, you'll then see that submission. Um, and you can export submissions. Um, you can mark them as red. You can star them, do all kinds of stuff. Um, but you'll notice at the bottom here, we've actually got a list of the actions that ran when that form was submitted. And what you can do, let's say, for example, you're integrating in with a third-party API, for example, maybe a custom API or MailChimp or whatever, and you find that API link isn't working. Maybe you put a key in incorrectly or something. At the bottom right here, you'll see there's a little run again icon, and I can click on that, rerun it, and actually rerun the action for that particular submission so you can test stuff over and over again. So let's go back to uh, the Add New page, and I'll show you a dynamic template and, and where um, we do something a little bit different from other form plugins. So what I'm going to do is go to post management, and I'm going to create a form that, when submitted, is actually going to create a post in WordPress. And we do that using our post management add-on. You'll notice on this template here, there's a little ACF icon. So WS Form has detected that I've got ACF installed. And ACF, if you don't know, is a, is a plugin for creating custom fields for posts or any custom post type that you have in WordPress. If I click Use Template on this template, it's actually now going to build me a form. Um, it's going to build a form that has all the regular fields you'd expect for a post. And below that, I've got all the fields that I've got configured for this particular post type in ACF. Can I just yep. interrupt and ask you a question there? So it, it has yeah. automatically detected all of the ACF fields and just, just yep. put them in one after another. Oh, wow. Yeah, in the order you have them in, in ACF. Right. Um, and it's also it will also put in width. So you'll see here these two widths are actually 50% in ACF. So it's, it's mimicked the same layout that you have in ACF. It also supports repeaters as well. So if you have repeaters in ACF, it'll put a repeatable section in on the form. So if we preview that, again, I can hit populate on this, and it will fill this form out. And it'll fill out all the different fields that we have for ACF on that form. Now, you can, you can change the layout of this form in any way you want. So you can again, you can resize the fields, resize the sections, um, anything that you want. So you'll see that even uh, the, the actual map itself, every time I hit populate, it'll take you somewhere else in the world. <laughs> it's a, a popular tourist destination. Um, so then again, I can do populate and submit on that. 
it'll populate it, submit that form, and that will now have created a new post in WordPress. Now, this is fully bi-directional as well. So as well as creating posts, you can actually populate forms using um, a post as well. Uh, and I'll show you how that's done. So if we go back into the form that it created, uh, we're going to go up to Actions on this form. And Actions are anything that run that whenever a form is submitted. So you can do things like send an email, show a message, integrate in with MailChimp or Constant Contact, whatever you want to use. Um, you can even run WordPress hooks and run your own PHP when a form is submitted. Um, but in this case, we've got a post management action. And if we expand that out, you'll see this is auto map for you. Um, so sure. all the fields of the form are automatically submitted to those ACF fields. This is all done automatically. You can remove these, add to it, do whatever you need to do for that particular action. To populate the form, we go to form settings. We can go to data. And I say populate using action. And you'll see that this is automatically populated as well. So I can tell it, give it a post ID, and it will take these ACF fields and populate these fields on the form itself. So again, fully bidirectional on, on the population side of things. <laughs> so that's you know a dynamic template. Another example would be maybe integrating with something like MailChimp. Uh, I can't use MailChimp as an example. That's just the one I've got on here. We actually integrate in with about 70 plus different integrations. Um, and I'll show you those here. So we've got you know all these different integrations here, everything from MailChimp, Moosen, Notion, Salesforce. We've even got an open AI integration as well, which is fun to play with. Yeah. Um, but on the um, uh, on the MailChimp tab, when we click to add a form, uh, you'll see that it pulls down our list from MailChimp. So this, again, is where we differentiate ourselves from other form plugins. So we're really trying to make that form development process faster for you. So it pulls down your list. And when I click Use Template, it's now pulling down all the custom fields, all the tags that you have for that list for MailChimp, and it's building a form for you. So uh, this is basically ready to go out of the box. You can inject this onto, you know, use the block editor. Um, we're also integrated in with uh, Beaver Builder, Divi, Oxygen, um, Bricks, Breakdown, all the, all the major site builders that are out there. We have a widget for. Um, so again, I can preview this. I can play around with this form. I can actually, you know, resize the fields, do whatever I want to do with this within the layout editor, and then I can do populate and submit, and that will then submit that. That's now actually added a record to Mailchimp. That's how quick it is to actually build forms for third-party integrations. So hang on, just 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 to reiterate that because yeah. I miss that uh, the first time <laughs> the first time we spoke, I totally missed what was going on there, yeah. and. Just to be really clear, if you've got something like MailChimp, yeah. what, what Mark is basically saying there is when you set up WS Form with the integration, it will reach into MailChimp and yeah. pull out of MailChimp all of the things that you could put mm -hmm. into a MailChimp form, and it will yeah. automatically create that form for you. So obviously, it'll Correctly. probably have name, email address, but all the custom data that you've got in MailChimp, Correct. the form is automatically created you don't have to do any of this and obviously you know nine yeah. tenths of that might be superfluous delete 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 yeah but yeah. it's there instantly for you to use and i made use of this this week and it just yeah, yeah did the thing great yeah yeah does it does it all for you um yeah so that's that's kind of building templates from integration so that really does speed up up the process and again you can tweak the form, do whatever you want with it. And again, it's all fully mobile responsive. Let's have a quick look at conditional logic and show you what, how that works. So our conditional logic is what we call form centric. So a lot of form plugins will have conditional logic on a field. And it will say something like, if this value equals ABC, then show this field. And that's pretty much the extent to what a lot of the conditional logic goes to. With ours, you can build conditions across multiple fields, forms, sections, tabs, and then do things across multiple things on that form. So I'll give you a quick example. <laughs> um, so with conditional, I mean, I can, I can expand this to make this a bit bigger. I can click Add, and then I can go to an if statement here. And I can actually do if statements on a form, tab, section, or field level. So I could do things like if the form is validated, or if a section is validated. Or on a particular field type, I could say if an email address is equal to, doesn't equal, contains, does, I mean, the, the list goes on. And every field type has its own context-sensitive list of conditions that you can choose. 
And we have some you know cooler stuff in there like character count equals word count equals. You can even do JavaScript regex on it. Um, and you can even go so far as doing it on mouse events as well. So you can say, if a mouse has hovered over the email button, then do something. Um, you can even control actions with conditional logic. So you could have a, um, a, you know, a, a Slack action that sends a message when someone hovers over the first name field, just hypothetically. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can go really crazy with this. So for example, we'll, we'll show you a very quick example. So if first name equals ABC, and then on the then, I can actually do multiple things. So I can say, you know, last name. I can set visibility on it if I want to. Um, or I could do email address one. We could set a value on that to CDE or something. Um, save that. And you'll notice now that when we put stuff in there, the last name of fields and the address line becomes CDE. So you can do multiple things within one condition. Um, and build some really quite powerful stuff with it. Um, this is probably one of the most popular features of WS Form in that you can just build, essentially build apps with it, um, with, with the power of the conditional logic. We also have variables as well. Um, so an example of a variable would be, let's say, on last name in the default value, I can do something like hash text, hash field, and I can put the ID in of that first name field and hit save and close. And if I then preview that form, it will now, oh, hang on, I'm going to have to, let me just get rid of that conditional logic because I'm hiding the field that I'm playing around with. Oh, okay. Yeah, good idea. Let's save that. And we'll preview that. Yeah. So you'll see now that last name is now copy and first name um, because I put that, <laughs> that code in there. Yeah. So there's a, an awful lot that you can do with the variables as well. I won't go into those because, I mean, there's, there are in excess of, I think, 100, 200 different variables, but um, that would take a long time to go through. But yeah. um, that gives you an idea of some of the power that you've got with, with the form itself. Um, so yeah, going on back onto the actions, just some of the other things that you can run there. Uh, you can do things like data erasure requests, data export requests. So we're actually integrated in with the um, GDPR functionality of WordPress. A lot of people don't realize that actually exists, but it's, it's there. And if you push a data erasure request through and someone types, this is basically for GDPR to say, hey, I want you to delete all my data or I want an export of all my data. Um, you can use that action to initiate that process. Um, post management is for creating posts. We have user management as well, which lets you do logins, registrations, forgotten passwords. You can run JavaScript. Um, the nice thing about running JavaScript is it's dynamic. So you can actually put out variables in the JavaScript to make JavaScript do some wonderful things. Um, and we'll show you an example of that in a minute when we come on to the WooCommerce stuff. You can run a WordPress hook. So you can actually run PHP on the server using an action. Again, that can be tied to conditional logic to make things really dynamic. Uh, and then you've got the usual stuff like you know sending an email. Um, but just to give you an example of some of the complex stuff you can do with a send email, you've got all the usual stuff like from and to. We have cool stuff like round robin. So I can add multiple two addresses, enable round robin, and I can say, hey, I've got a sales team of three people. And I can send those emails equally between those three salespeople if I want to. Or I can wait, send... wait. So what, it just it cycles through yep. your sales staff so that yep. not everybody's. That's Correct. So yeah. great. Yeah. And you can nice. actually do stuff like 50, 25, 25. So this person gets it twice as often as the people below it <laughs> <That's great. laughs> but what yeah. a what a fabulous feature for a big team you know that are getting yeah. i don't know hundreds of emails a day it's not going to one person who then has to manually figure yeah. out where to subroute them brilliant yeah yeah and that's just one of the features yeah, of, one. <laughs> of sending <email. laughs> yeah so we have there are 55 core field types um, and if you use some of the other add-ons like the woocommerce add-on and things like that you'll get additional uh, field types registered. Just to show you, you know, one of the field types, let's just add a select field onto the form. Um, you've got the usual stuff you'd expect to see, like making a field required, making it hidden, making it multiple, so you can choose multiple selects. Uh, but we have some more complex stuff, like um, autocomplete. So you can actually tell the browser how you want that data to be autocompleted. You can enable select two on that select field. So select two enables you to kind of partially type in part of an option to try and find it. It's quite useful for like a maybe a car make bottle selector where you're, you're searching through a lot of data. Um, and then we have accessibility on every field. So we're WCAG com compliant. 
um, you can actually modify that label, the ARIA label, if you if you want to. So if you find that your regular label doesn't bode well in an accessibility environment, then you can actually change that label here. Um, if we go to options on a select field, I'll show you where we're a little bit different here. So normally with a form plugin, you can add values and, and the text that appears in that option list. And you can right. do that here, so you can add additional options here very easily. Um, but we also have a thing called data source. So with data source, you can actually go to presets, select a preset from our CDN, um, and I can do, say, countries full, pull the data down, and it will fill out that data for you. Wait, you'll wait, notice... wait, hang on, hang on. You've just saved everybody about <laughs> That's so, so all countries immediately done, zip codes, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you'll, you'll notice that when I pull one of these down, let's just do maybe countries basic. We've, we've got two columns here, right? So usually this would be like your value. This would be the text. Yeah. Now I can, let's say a client gives you a CSV file of data. You can drag that CSV file into this select field. It'll pull that data in. And then below that, I can actually choose which of these columns I want to be used for the labels and which are the ones I want to be used for the value. So right. for example, for values, I may want to use the alpha three column. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Now you can do other cool stuff, like I can click on this settings icon here, and I can say auto op group this select by region, and it'll actually build groups for the regions that are in that CSV data. <laughs> so if I hit save and close, and I preview this, you'll now notice that our drop down is now op grouped by region automatically. Yeah. So you can very quickly manipulate data for a select drop down. Um, can you just go back and show us what the options were to pre-fill? So you showed us, you, we briefly saw Yeah, the sure. Field. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to presets. Yeah. yeah. So these are these are all of our CDN libraries. You've got everything from different, like these are business codes, SIC codes. Yeah. Um, different colors, like website colors, dates and times. Yeah. Um, so you've got like weekdays, um, e-commerce currencies and sizes, so like small, medium, large, and things like that. Um, geographic. So we have uh, Australian states, US states. We've got Canadian provinces, et cetera. Um, personal stuff such as age brackets. These are good for like surveys and yeah. uh, forms like that. Uh, so we have some more survey stuff down here. These CSV files, incidentally, are free to use. We have them on our website. So if you actually go into Google and type in sample CSV files, you can download these files from us. You, you're welcome to use them in any development that you're using. Um, now, in addition to presets, you can also populate a select from post data if you want. So you can do stuff like, I want to populate a list of posts. Um, and then you can actually pull that data down and use that for your select field. So I can say, I want to use the title in my label and the ID here for the value in that particular select field. Um, you can do it with post statuses, terms. You can do user lists. You can even run a WordPress filter hook and write your own PHP to populate that select field. Um, and that actually works for select fields, checkboxes, and um, uh, radio fields as well. So yeah, it's very, very dynamic. And you can do um, a lot with these different data sources here. So that's just an example of one field. And, and where, <laughs> yeah, <I was> gonna... <laughs> where we one field holds, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I th you know, this is one of the advantages WS Form over other form plugins. We've basically taken the HTML5 spec for every field type and ripped it apart. So all of the attributes that you want um, to use are available in here. Um, on a select field, for example, you know, you can add additional class wrappers, field wrappers. Um, you can put restrictions on fields. So you can say only show this field if a user is logged in or logged out or has a particular user role or capability. Um, you can actually do that at a tab section and field level as well, and a form level as well. So you can actually block a form. So if, if it, let's say you had logged in on a tab, yeah. would yeah. that that tab would be completely invisible? If somebody was not logged in, they they would yeah. they wouldn't even the tab wouldn't exist essentially. Correct. It's yeah. not like it's yeah. a blank empty tag. It's <clears throat> yeah, it actually physically removes it from okay. the DOM, so yeah. you can't see the data in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you've got a lot of different validation options as well. So by default. With um, with WS4, when you hit submit, it will go through the fields and, and work out which fields are invalid and, and move the cursor to the first one that's invalid. You can also do inline validation, so it shows you fields that aren't valid as you're uh, filling out that form. Um, you can customize the invalid feedback text 
Uh, so if the text that we automatically generate doesn't really bode well, you can customize that if you want to. And it goes on. <laughs> There's yeah. um, a lot of different options for every every single different field type. So um, you know, get in there and have a have a play around with it. Um, we have a, a section library as well. Um, and what the section library allows you to do is to pull in groups of fields onto a form that are predefined. So if you want to maybe pull in an inter international address section, I can just drag that in and it pulls the fields in. Um, so that, again, this is fully responsive. If there's any conditional logic within that section that's needed, maybe, I mean, I think we've got some here that are like, uh, you know, password confirmation. You might yeah. have a bit of JavaScript there to, to show whether or not uh, they match. That will actually be pulled in as well. Now, if you build a section that you like and you want to use it elsewhere, you've got a couple of options. You can actually download that section as a JSON file and pull that into another form if you want to, or you can add it to your section library. So, you know, I can modify this any way I like, and then I can click on Add to My Sections, and then you'll notice it's now added that here as a, a new right. section in my section library, and I can then drag that into any other field I want and use it elsewhere. Um, you can also, you can actually download complete forms, tabs, or sections as JSON files. So I'll give you an example. Let's, um, let's just delete these two here. And let's just say this section here, we want to turn that into something in my section library. So I could download that file. I can actually drag that file into my sections, and that will then become available on another site that I'm working with. So it's very easy to move forms around. You can move whole so, forms. Okay. Sorry, just to be clear there, the, yeah. you're talking in one situation where you're within one website, but also you're talking about across multiple websites. You download it onto the desktop, change tabs in your browser, then drag yeah. it in, and Correct. it's now on your new website. Brilliant. Correct. Yeah. 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 So very easy to move move things around. Um, we have uh, support built into the plugin itself, so you can access our full knowledge base within here. You can contact our support team from within the plugin. Um, and you can actually send your form to us and your system info if you wish. Um, if you send us your form, we can obviously have a look at it and see you know, where things are going wrong or if you need some help with settings. Um, and then under form settings, we've then got some other fun stuff. So you've got stuff like tracking. Um, so you can actually enable Google event tracking on your form. So if you have Google Tag Manager installed or you have Google Analytics installed or both, um, this will automatically fire events for your form. So um, mm -hmm. when you hover over a, a, or if you interact with, sorry, a field, it will actually fire an event for that field. So you can actually see you know, where people are interacting with your form. At a form level, when you submit the form, it will actually submit a data layer um, form submission event um, and also a Google Analytics conversion event as well. So um, it does all that for you behind the scenes automatically. And it actually supports three different versions of Google Analytics and it detects which one you've got installed and handles all of that for you. All you've got to do is just check the box and, and off you go. And we have a, a knowledge base article about how all that works. You can enable tracking on forms as well. Um, by default, WS Form is a cookie-less, non-tracking solution out of the box. So uh, just to make sure that you're GDPR compliant. If you want to enable tracking on forms, you can come into tracking here and you can just choose what tracking you want to enable. So you've got things like tracking the referrer, tracking the remote IP. We also have IP lookup as well. So you can actually get the city, region, county, time zone by IP address. That all is it's all done automatically behind the scenes for you. Uh, and that's a free service. Um, there's no additional charge for that. Um, we've also got various different spam measures within WS Form as well. So we've got things like human presence, which is actually an artificial intelligence way of checking if you're a, um, a real user or not. Uh, Akismet is actually looking at content, looking for bad words. Um, but then we've got all the usual stuff like captures. So we've got recapture. We, we actually support version 2 and 3 of recapture. Uh, we have hCapture, which is a more privacy-focused capture. And then we've got the, the newest one, which is Cloudflare Turnstile, which is my favorite. Um, it's a lot more accessible. Doesn't generally require you to click on, you know, uh, what's the what's the traffic light? What's, yeah, where's right, a bird right. flying in All the picture? That, yeah. um, and uh, that's that's uh, a quite a, a nice and easy one to use. And then we have the usual stuff like Honeypot, and we've got integration in with a lot of different third-party spam providers for checking things like disposable email addresses and, and things like that. Um, so they're they're all part of of WS Form. 
you have form limitations, so you can actually schedule a form, uh, schedule it to start and stop. You can limit the number of submissions a form has. You can limit what type of user can see that form, so on and so forth. It goes on and on. Um, in terms of uh, some of the integrations that we've got, one of the ones I did want to show you today was our WooCommerce integration. Yes, so, please. <laughs> so you can take any WS form form and put it on a product to enable you to customize that product. So I'll give you an example. Here's a T-shirt. This is a this is actually using the storefront template for WooCommerce. But what this is doing is taking a form and it's actually using it to customize that product. So any fields that you have on the form become metadata in the cart when the product is added. So this is just showing an example of changing a T-shirt color. Um, you can actually use a custom color here as well. You'll notice the word commerce is changing between dark and light. And we're actually using, so our, con <laughs> we're using our conditional logic on, a, um, on the color field to determine how light that color is of that T-shirt. Um, we have a tutorial on our website that shows how to actually build this particular demo. But, but you've got a hue setting in WS Form to figure out the hue yeah. of the color. <laughs> Somebody. Yeah, yeah. So, if you, and again, this is where the context sensitive conditional logic comes in. So, if we go to fields here um, and we'll pull in, let's see. Well, this is a moment of physician, heal thyself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where so is be it? Able, Where yeah. Is well, I should use my field search here, shouldn't I? Yeah. yeah. I'll be able to find it. Um, but if you go to, yeah, color here, we go to conditional logic. And if we go, if color, you'll notice that the options here change for a color field. So you can say, is the lightness greater than 50%? And then based upon that, I can then, I could do select, select a row if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, the size, the limit. <laughs> Whatever right. you want to use. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's basically how this T-shirt demo is working. Now, the, the WooCommerce extension is nice because it, it really is, Kind of multiple WooCommerce extensions all rolled into one. So you can do anything from a very basic donate plugin. So we have WooCommerce built into WS Form. I'll show you a very simple example of that. We're going to add new, go to e commerce, and we'll just load up an e commerce template. Um, so you can use our e commerce fields to build quite complex um, forms for doing maybe just a quote, but you can also tie that in with Stripe and PayPal. Um, and in, you know, build a basic payment page or yeah. gateway if, if you want. Yeah. Um, you can tie that in with the post management plugin, so it creates a post if you pay for something. And yeah, you see how it's all coming together now. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, within WordPress, uh, within WooCommerce, sorry, you could just add a price field, and there you go. There's your donate. Um, add to cart, and there we go. So that will then add that to there. So you can see how you can adjust the WooCommerce price using our e-commerce fields. Um, you can also do things like the multi-step form that we showed earlier on. So if we go to multi-tab here, this is actually a multi-tab form within a product. Uh, as I fill this out, we've got a little progress bar on there. Go to next. You can actually choose the amount of the product. You see how these fields actually always go, always go large. large. Always go large. Always go large. Yeah, yeah. Go Let's large. give them loads of money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then here's actually a signature field on the product, so you can use that to approve that. That signature field could be made required as well. So if they don't fill that out, it'll actually flag and say, "Hey, you haven't filled out the signature." Yeah. Click add to cart, and then those different fields will then appear on the cart itself. Uh, pizza selector, always a good <laughs> of one. Of course, pizza so... selector. <laughs> This is great. So we, we can choose what we want on the pizza. So this is actually <laughs> this That's is so actually good. I love it. <laughs> this is a, what's called a price checkbox. So it's a, it's a regular checkbox field, but when you check one of them, the price that's associated with that checkbox will be added to the amount. You um, are so, that is so, I mean the practical application of that for a subset of people is so yeah. obvious. That's so great, Mark. Yeah, and you may just want a pizza on your website. I mean, That's, yeah. it, well, exactly. Yeah. If yeah, <laughs> Rob Kearns in the comments just said, "Do you deliver?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Google Maps. So we have Google Map integration, uh, so you can actually add a map to the product if you want to. Um, the, we also have integration in with things like Google Places. So if we go to demos here and we'll do a Google address demo, 
Uh, hopefully, I've got the key on here. Let's see. Well, if not, we can do something else. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So you can see here, I can put an address in. It will actually take you to that place on the map and auto complete the fields for all the other um, people, uh, all the other address pieces that have come down from Google. So the way that works is, if I go to this uh, this Google address field, whatever they type in when they choose a selection, we then map the data that comes back from Google to the fields on the form. So you can actually fill out multiple fields. So if maybe you've got a billing, billing and a shipping address, yep. you could fill both of those out with the same search. And you can see the list of options that you have coming back from Google. Um, and you can basically assign those to any of the fields on your form. Um, let's close that down. And let's go back to the WooCommerce again. Yeah, so that's Google, Google Maps, Google Places. Um, there's a lot of other demos on here. If you want to see these, just go to woocommerce.wsform.com. Um, calculations as well is a whole new area of, of WS Form 2. Uh, maybe I oh, I like this. this. Go on, I've seen this, but yeah, this is great. Go on. So we'll go to, uh, let's go to a knowledge base. And we'll go to calculated fields. So calculated fields let you do basic stuff like arithmetic, right? So I can have two fields. I can add those together. I can do subtraction. I can also do math variables. So it starts getting a little bit more complicated. So you've got stuff like minimum, maximum, positive, sign, you know, all the stuff we did at school that we've forgotten about. That's right, yeah. <laughs> we all need sign from time to yeah. time, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but you can also do stuff like average. So I can work out average numbers between different fields. Um, you can actually use calculated fields between repeatable sections. So some of the form plugins, when you do repeaters, requires a bunch of PHP and stuff to get it working. With WS Form, if you want to create a repeatable field, if I just create a form quickly for you, I just do a contact us. If I want to make a, a, a section repeatable, I just edit the section and I click enabled and that's it. And WS Form does everything else for you. So it'll handle conditional logic within that section inside and outside of that repeatable section calculations within that section is all all managed for you you don't have to do anything so if we go back to where was i calculations here no did i just lose my page I was yeah saying. you may have shut you may have closed no no that was it wasn't that it mm, no. no that wasn't no, it that I was right at the beginning shut it down. <laughs> yeah yeah start again start again <laughs> shut it down yeah so if we go back to here repeatable section so what i've got here is a slider mm. outside of a repeater and inside this repeater here, I'm telling it that I want that value inversed uh, well, on the right-hand side. So as I move this, you'll see that the whatever value I've got outside the repeater is actually being repeated inside that repeater. And I can create another row, and it will then extend to those. So what I'm just trying to demonstrate is that when you're doing fairly complex forms, we're handling a lot of that calculation for you. So there's, this, you know, to do this is literally a, a little bit of code that just says hash calc, hash field, this ID number up here, um, and it handles everything else for you. Within a repeater, so it'll actually do handle that within the repeater row itself. And you can do stuff like, you know, reordering these and move them up and down. And then outside of a normal section, you'll see that we're actually adding up value of the range sliders within those repeaters good so, grief yeah so it does quite a, quite a lot of uh, stuff behind the scenes that you don't have to worry about the yeah. main aim with ws form is to rapidly build complex forms without the need for a bunch of code and a bunch of plugins either um so is, is know, that really is that that your target audience people <clears throat> really i mean obviously you can do the the contact form right i mean that's yeah yeah, yeah you can do yeah. that but you can yeah. also go like really deep market looks like you know you really get into oh, yeah. the yeah. but you, so, you're doing it all in a UI there's very few circumstances where you need yeah. to be resorting to yeah. PHP or you'll see most of the stuff that we've done today has yep. just been yeah you just press buttons right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and it and it and it just kind of does it for you so that's that's really Yes, you can do your basic contact us form if the client wants that. But if you want to do a more complex form, then we've got everything in there. And the you know a lot of some plugins, even just to get a signature field working, you've got to install another plugin for that. Um, and we have that all built in. So all these core fields I've shown you, pretty much everything I've shown you is just WS Form Pro plus you know when we've done the post management, just the post management add on. Really, we only have add-ons when it's going to be a significant amount of additional code that you you need for that particular. Uh, application. Um, but we also, we're very hot on 
performance. So when you're when the form is actually rendered on the page, if you're not using conditional logic or you're not using repeaters uh, or you're not using e-commerce, we don't load the libraries for that. So it keeps nice. the JavaScript nice. down nice and clean. So you've just got a basic contact us form. You're looking at about 40K of code, um, and that's it. So it's, it's, it's really, really cut down. It's only when you start adding lots and lots and lots of different things that you're going to start increasing the amount of JavaScript that's, that's used. Um, but we've just done that for, for, for uh, performance reasons. So, um, so yeah, just very quickly about the user management stuff. You can create register forms, edit profile, login, forgotten password forms. Um, and you can then place those anywhere on your website. These forms are automatically created for you again. So if I do a registration form and use template, it'll create that form for me. If I've got ACF installed, it's not just ACF as well. I should have mentioned it's uh, ACF, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Metabox, point. Toolset, Pods, and Jet Engine. So we're integrating with those five different custom fill plugins. Um, also WooCommerce. So you'll see because I've got WooCommerce installed, the registration form actually has bidding and shipping on it. Um, so oh, so it wouldn't that, have pushed those in if you didn't have WooCommerce. Nice. Correct. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it'll it populates all that information for you. Um, you have full undo on the on the site as well on the on the form itself. So if I you know play around with this a little bit, uh, if I go to undo, you can actually go back to any step on that form um, nice. during that session, <laughs> um, and you can just click on one of those steps and go back to that. If you, you know, if you make a mistake, you can you can always roll back. Um, so yeah, and then um, we we do have a customized feature which enables you to change the fonts, you know, border radiuses, padding, and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, now I, I confess this... I missed that, and then I suddenly saw it. Yeah, it was one of the yeah. menu items, and and it is you yeah. can just it's got like twelve options or something, and it just changes yeah. all the stuff you need. Yeah, right? yeah. Most of our audience are developers, so they tweak stuff with CSS. Yeah, uh, but if you want to change colors and fonts and stuff like that, you can do that. With six point two coming out, we're going to be introducing some even more styling features because they finally got you know a lot of the styling stuff settled down in Gutenberg now. Um, so we're going to be introducing some new features in there. Um, if you're using Bootstrap or Foundation as a framework on your site, WS Form will actually um, output native HTML to those frameworks. So we actually output HTML in 11 different formats. And um, so if you've got a site in Bootstrap that's all styled up and ready to go, it will just inherit all of those styles you have for Bootstrap and will actually output the HTML in Bootstrap format. Um, which is incredibly powerful when um, if you're a Bootstrap or Foundation user, that really speeds things up. Uh, a lot of our styling just inherits default styling, so we inherit fonts and colors and stuff like that. Um, so the form pretty much works out of the box. So we have a WS form framework that it, it rolls back to. So, so there you go. There's a quick run through of, of WS form, some of the no features kidding. it has. No kidding, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, and and. Uh, you, you, it, there's a lot more behind the scenes. It's one of those plugins where you kind of click, click, click and get deeper and deeper into it and you realize what it actually does. The development of WS Form is very much um, very much driven by our customers. So if anybody has any ideas or features, we have a feature list page and we use that. We basically feed off that and develop the product that way. Um, customer support is our number one priority. And I think that's evident in the reviews that we get on the, the WordPress plugin repo. So we have a light version of WS form. If you just want to build a contact us form, then we've got a light edition of this. Uh, it doesn't have the conditional logic and some of the fun features I've shown you here. But um, if you do want to just do a, um, you know, a basic contact us form or, you know, maybe an inquiry form, you can do that with our light edition. Yeah. Uh, so a couple of quick things. Firstly, sure. Um, the support being the number one priority for you, that's mm. that's dead cool, right? Because we're all going to yeah. run into problems. Yeah. And, and yeah. just to highlight that again, the support is in the plugin. You it's in the plugin, but you can also, you can go to our website as well, wsform.com slash support and submit a ticket through there as well. And but you can also you, email us. If you tick that box, yeah. the form so comes here. along for the ride, right? So if that's you've correct. got a form and it's throwing errors, yeah. you know, yeah. unexpected behavior, you just tick that box yep. and then you or your team can troubleshoot that and give you a precise answer. None of this kind of, can you clone a site for me and let me have yeah. you know, WordPress yeah. admin access. You just yeah. click that and you're, you're off to the Give race. us your form, yeah, and we get everything. Also, as you're typing in into the inquiry box here, we actually analyze what you're typing in and we'll give you some suggestions off the bat. 
Okay. Um, so a lot of the times it's just pointing people in the right direction to a knowledge base article. Yeah. But if they do have a genuine issue, you know, we have bugs like every other plugin. Uh, if someone's trying to do something that maybe we haven't tried before and there's an issue with it, by getting a copy of the form, we can then replicate that and then we can get that bug fixed nice and quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's amazing. Yeah. So the support is really top notch. That's a big deal for you. Mm -hmm. In terms of, what it's for, we we sort of talked about the fact that it really it you know you can do your contact form, but also you can mm -hmm. more or less do anything. And it was kind of curious when you were talking a minute ago, you kind of implied that really this could be the basis of a fairly complicated like SaaS solution almost. You really could build something much more than a a typical yeah. brochure website. You know, you you really can yeah. suck data out, push data back, move it all around the place. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's amazing. I mean, we even have. Um... You know, one of our actions is uh, a webhook action. I can give you an example of that. So if we go to the knowledge base, um, just to show you, you know, some of the back and forth that you can yep. do with it. So with a webhook, uh, this is actually using our webhook. When I click this button, it's going to run an action, a webhook action, that's going to go off to random user. And the data I get back from that is going to be loaded into the form. So that's an example of using an action to go off, get data, and then modify stuff on your form. So you could build your own lookup endpoint, you know, or use a third-party API to do that. Um, another example is uh, like the OpenAI integration that we have. So if we go to OpenAI, um, here's an example. So I can say, you know, what is an Apple? Uh, do you get completion? When I do that, it's making a request off to OpenAI, and the completion is then getting loaded into that completion text box there. And that can this, this again, can be any field on your form. Um, it'll even work with images. So I can do, you know, a fluffy dog. Um, <laughs> and I can do get image. And it'll actually go off to OpenAI, use their image generation, and then put that image into the image field there. And I can then submit that as part of my form. So I could use that to perhaps create a blog featured image or yeah. a user avatar, whatever it may be. If you're watching this video, do not spam Mark's form. <laughs> you know, this is not an excuse for you to use Mark's API key for ChatGPT. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Fortunately, it becomes, very cheap, it becomes the so. surrogate way of, of using yeah. ChatGPT. Um, it's truly amazing. I mean, obviously, you've gone through this at breakneck speed. Uh, yeah. You've talked about yeah. support. You've talked about um, the fact that it can do incredibly complicated things. What about if we're sort of self-starters and we want to, I mean, we, we want to learn this ourselves. You've, you've obviously just sort of clicked through. I can see knowledge base written at the top there. Yeah. You have fairly yeah. extensive documentation for all the things. Yes, yeah, so you've got all the quick start stuff. So learning about the anatomy of a form, how that works, learning about our debug console, how to add forms to your website, uh, you know, all the different visual builders that we integrate in with. Um, and then you've got tutorials. I mean, there's just a lot of tutorials in here. If, if we... If we have somebody coming to us with an inquiry about how do I do something, we'll typically build a knowledge base article for it, so the next person that comes along can reference that. Right. Um, nice. And there's a lot on there, isn't there? You've really yeah. got it down. Yeah. 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 And you've got everything from you know how do I run JavaScript, how do I build stuff with ACF. Uh, so we've got like an ACF video here that talks through you know how to how to create forms with ACF. Uh, different ways of styling things. Um, so you can do cool stuff with radios, like you can turn radios into images, color selectors, switches. Um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff behind the scenes that enable you to really customize the user interface. And then we've got stuff like, you know, the data grid stuff that I showed you, um, the different front end frameworks that we work with. Obviously, we have our fallback framework that we're showing you today. And, and it goes on. So yeah, there's a very extensive knowledge base there that talks you through the basics. And, and we actually have a little um, onboarding welcome screen when you've installed the plugin um, that just kind of asks you how familiar you are with using forms. Form That's, that was very cool. I got to say, yeah, the first thing that you get is a big yeah. blue screen, which just yeah. guides you through. Um, yeah. Oh, there we go. Big blue screen. Yeah. Here yeah. we go. You can so, do how familiar are you. Now, if you say keep it simple, we actually dumb down the user interface a little bit um, just to make it a bit easier to use. If you're a developer, we enable everything, um, including the debug console. And then it asks you, you know, are you using a front-end framework? If you're not sure, it doesn't matter. You can just fall back to ours. And then we have a little video that talks you through how to use the layout editor. <laughs> and get started and off you go. 
I hope if you're watching this, no matter what day of the year you're watching this, because it's going to be stuck up on YouTube, I hope you're getting the impression that it, re it really is incredibly complicated. It, that is to say, it can do complicated things. But fair to say that Mark's managed to squeeze a lot of that into what will <laughs> become a familiar UI. Everything's in the same yeah. way all the time. You know, you'll get that muscle memory. And thanks to the knowledge base, you'll be able to figure that out by yourself yeah. if need be, but with the help of some videos and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, that is truly amazing. Just before we go to the questions, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'll just just try and put the screen back to how I had it. There we go. Because um, we can get to the pricing in a moment. But before we do that, I think it, I guess it's probably time to sort of drop in our offer little thing. But um, check, check this out. <laughs> um, Ta -da. Yeah, look, I don't know where to put it. Should I go there? Yeah, let's no, let's go with the other one. Um, so <laughs> you can get WS form. Mark has very kindly given WP Builds a coupon code. Um, it's good for twenty percent off. So if you fancy looking at this, then just rest assured, you know, if you play with the light version and you want to upgrade, the coupon code is, as you might expect, WP builds, all one word, no spaces, WP builds. I've got it all in capital letters, but I'm not sure that really matters yeah, be all fine. that much. And if you fancy um, if you fancy buying it, you can scan that QR code, which is kind of fun. Cool. This is a new feature built into this <laughs> built into this platform. <laughs> Um, but if you do fancy throwing WP Builds a bone, then that's the link for that. Obviously, you can just go to wsform.com. Yeah. And that coupon will... code is valid for any edition as well. So, oh, thank um, you. Oh, that's yes, good we have, yeah. we have a personal edition, which is a one-site license. There's a freelance for five-site license. That includes some of our add-ons. Yeah. And then we have an agency edition, which is the yeah. whole, whole shebang. So... so it, yeah, like I said, if you fancy throwing WP Builds a bone, the URL for that is wpbuilds.com forward slash link forward slash WS form. But, you know, if you don't want to do that, you can not and <laughs> just go to WS form. It's totally <laughs> fine. Mark will be happy. I'll be happy because he's happy. Um, <laughs> but, 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 but we mentioned at the top of the show that we were, that Mark was going to give away two licenses. Do you want to just outline which kind of licenses those are? Yeah, so it's uh, we're giving away two of our personal license, which is the single site license. Um, so yeah, giving giving away two full versions of the Pro Edition. Yeah. Okay, and the way that you're going to get access to that is to now that let me just get this right. Here we go. If you want to get access to that, then you need to go to this link. And I think I've got the funky thing as well. Yeah, look, uh, there we go. Uh, there there we go. you can you can <laughs> use that QR code, and it will take you to this devilishly complicated form. Uh, look, look, look at it. Look, there's a WS form with just so many fields. Uh, and essentially, what we need from you is the following. If you want to win one of the licenses, we need your name, your email address. Honestly, they're going to be binned. Um, I don't know on what cycle, but let's say within the next day or so, whenever the, whenever we decide to close this down, I'll, I'll bin them. If you click this button, you'll get on our mailing list, but it's unchecked by default. And this is the only field which really uh, is, is of any importance. We want to know why you want to win it. So what I've written here in less than 200 words, tell us why you want to, want to win this license. This, could, this is the only criteria that we'll <laughs> use to award the prize. Uh, it could be funny, profound, philanthropic, whatever you like. I, I quite like humor. So, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be deciding who wins. So it's totally up to you. But um, this is at, let me turn that graphic off. That graphic, honestly, those QR codes, they're freaking me out, to be honest. Uh, ugh, where have we gone? Right, let me turn that one off. And let me go back to this. Win it. There we go. This is the URL for that. If you go to wpbuilds.com forward slash link forward slash win WS form, I'm going to say it again, wpbuilds.com forward slash link forward slash win WS form. I don't know how long I'm going to keep this going. Let's say that I'll keep it going for at least a week. It might be a little bit more, but I'll announce on a WP Builds podcast episode or news episode who the lucky winners are. But honestly, why not go for it? 
Give it a go. You never Give know. You might, you might, yeah, exactly. You might have a chance. Tell Nathan your favourite joke. Tell me <laughs> your favourite. Yes, as long as, it, as long as you explain why you want to win it, then <laughs> then you know you never you never know. You might win something. Right. Let's see if we got any questions, shall we? I'm going to go right mm-hmm. back to the top because I think it's probably time to do some of those. Right. So we had all the introductory stuff. Uh, so firstly, some some congratulations. I suppose uh, we had Craig Patterson in the comment, and it looks like he'd never seen WS form before. This was quite right. early on in the in the presentation, and he mm-hmm. said that he was finding it to be really really impressive um okay so here's something that might be apropos uh Mm -hmm. mohammed is saying i am using fluent form premium this is Mm -hmm. obviously a rival uh will you highlight a few of the benefits of ws form over fluent form now i don't know if you're prepared to do that up to you uh yeah i mean things like the um bi-directional integrations that we have um We've really gone to town on the integration side of things, and, and those are very deep integrations. Automatically creating forms from those integrations is something I don't think you'll find in fluent forms. Um, just the the fully responsive form editor is something that other form plugins don't have. Um, you can do it with, you know, some form plugins will have it so that the sections are responsive, but you don't have control over that. So with WS Form, you have full control over the layout, basically. Um, and I think really just the extent of the functionality that we have in WS form, uh, particularly at a field level, um, the section library and things like that is stuff that you won't find in Fluid. The list goes on. Yes. <laughs> we saw quite a lot in there, didn't we? Okay, yeah. thank you yeah. for answering that question. And Mohammed, obviously, you know, he's here. Mark is a real person. You can contact him via the website if you've got any questions Absolutely. about a specific feature which you want to yeah. know if it maps over. Uh, just another nice comment from Craig. He says he's been a Gravity Form user for 11 plus years and created quite some extensive and complicated forms. But WS Forms seems to have helped make things easier to put together. Yeah, I think it's fair mm-hmm. to say that you've gone to town on that, haven't you? The UI is... Really, yeah. really good. Craig, again, yeah. seems to be bowled over by this. Uh, the conditional options are really great, he says. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is a question from um, Craig again, this yeah. particularly. Can it migrate? So if you're thinking of coming from <clears throat> another form, any mm-hmm. options to just bring in what you've already made? Yes, you can. Yeah, so if you're – actually, we, we import from Gravity Forms, WP Forms, Visual Form Builder. We're actually working on a Fluent Forms integration as well. Um, but it will pull across the form and it'll actually import all the submissions as well that are associated associated with that form. So you can do pretty much a full migration. There are some things that um, won't get pulled across because we're obviously we're not one-to-one on a lot of these other form plugins, but the migration tool makes that process a lot easier. Nice. Thank you very much indeed. That's perfect. So there we go. (laughs) Just Bob Don, you just know. It's, <laughs> I don't need it since I have it. So this is in answer to the, the question. But the reason I would like it was so that I could create a form with AI where people could submit images of Nathan's head on various animal bodies so I could tweet them out. <laughs> this, I'm not even going to say why this is funny, but it's got something is- to do with WordCamp Europe. <laughs> uh, sorry, yes. WordCamp uh, Asia is, is all I'm going to say. You can find that out elsewhere uh so we're topping out we've basically made it to the hour that's perfect i don't see any other questions coming in reach out to mark you know for goodness sake if you've watched this and you're in any doubt just reach out to mark use the contact form go and download the light version have a play uh but just a couple of quick reminders let's take our well no i'll leave that screen there so if you want to win it um there's two licenses which are available and this is the url that you need to go to one more time, wpbuilds.com forward slash, forward slash link forward slash win WS form. And if you want to use a coupon code, then it's there. Look, 20% off with WP Builds if you are not a successful winner. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And that coupon code doesn't expire, so they can use that whenever. Oh, great. Can you stack it? If you stack it five times, can you get it for free? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. Uh, right. So here we go, Craig. I think this is probably the perfect way to finish. Uh, Craig says, "Mark, your demo has been oh, thank you, Craig. Thank you, Craig. Report back. Don't don't be don't be a stranger. Let let us know. Let Mark know." Uh, whether you got it and if you made use of it, I'm sure he'd be delighted to hear. Yeah. Mark. Westgard from Game of Thrones. Uh, <laughs> we will we will have Medieval you have Mark. you back, I'm sure, at some point. We often have Mark on our this week in WordPress show, which we do every Monday. Yeah. 
uh, yeah. come and join us for that. But for now, thanks for joining us. Thanks for any comments that you made. Really appreciate it. We'll see you around. Take it easy.